All right, this one is, uh, well, what an interesting time to be launching a graphics card, right? But perhaps not as interesting as the timing of needing to immediately upgrade, but uh, today we're gonna talk about the 5060 Ti and why you might consider that for your next mid-range build. All right, welcome to Machines More. So based on the latest Steam hardware survey, the 4060, 3060, 3060 Ti, uh, 4060 Ti, uh, those are some of the most commonly utilized cards. Of course, this is more of an anecdotal survey, but uh, nonetheless, we can at least gather that this level of card is what gamers buy. So those are the two cards that are announced, 5060 Ti and 5060. Technically, there are three distinct GPU SKUs that NVIDIA is launching, but we're going to talk about the 5060 Ti highlights now because that is the card that is available at, uh, launching today. And the 5060 will follow in May, at least that's the current ETA. NVIDIA's 5060 Ti is another mid-range GPU in its Blackwell 5000 series lineup. It sports 4608 CUDA cores, compare that to 4352 on the 4060 Ti and 6144 on the 5070. Shader cores are spec at 24 T-flops. The reason why there are two distinct SKUs for 5060 Ti is in the VRAM amount. There's an 8 gig version and there's a 16 gig version both GDDR7 on a 128-bit bus and compare that to a 192-bit bus on the 5070. The 4060 Ti had a similar 16 gig and 8 gig VRAM dichotomy. Uh, both 5060 and Ti are PCIe Gen 5 GPUs unless you're using a Gen 3 or Gen 4 riser cable where that in combination with the Gen 5 GPU may cause some confusion with your motherboard's PCIe Gen auto detection. 5060 and 5060 Ti will run without impediments on an older board with a Gen 4 and even a Gen 3 slot. Simply put, the data rate is not high enough that any of that will matter. Uh, what we've been seeing with 5000 series versus vanilla 4000 series, you know, non-super, are uh, small gains, typically around 10 to 15 percent. With the 5070, I saw around 20 percent versus 4070. So that's kind of the frame of reference going into this uh, as we go into the performance benchmarks, it is important to also keep in mind TBP on the 5060 Ti is higher than the 4060 Ti by 20 watts. So naturally, by virtue of it getting more power, we should already be expecting extra performance for any architectural gains. With 5060 Ti, you should see most boards equipped with the single 8-pin power plug. So nice and simple, should make for a nice, simple, clean cable run in your build. MSRP, whatever that means, uh, for the 8 gig version is 380 and 430 for the 16 gig version. And that is actually a big change. Uh, not so much the raw MSRP, which was 400 for the 4060 Ti 8 gig, but more so the difference between 8 and 16 gig versions. The 4060 Ti 16 gig had a MSRP of 500. And that'll have big implications on my recommendations, which I'll touch on after the performance metrics, but uh, that's a smaller difference, right? So as with 5070 Ti, this 5060 and 5060 Ti is AIC or partner only. There's no Founders Edition card, so take that MSRP for what you will. I will say if consumers can't reasonably get a card for that price, then it's completely meaningless. Uh, model I have here is ASUS's Prime 16G model. Big thanks to ASUS for uh, providing the card for review. As with all my reviews, uh, they're not paid for or sponsored by the manufacturers. If you enjoy objective and well-researched reviews, please make sure to subscribe because it really helps the channel grow. So technically this is an OC model, although I did find the TBP to match NVIDIA's spec. It came in right around 180 watts. Boost clocks did come in well ahead of NVIDIA spec, which is 2.57 gigahertz, although your most basic of models can't typically boost ahead of the spec to boost targets. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some 5060 Ti performance benchmarks, and then I'll share some specific figures and thoughts on the ASUS Prime Cooler for your reference. Oh, so first off, leading with some synthetic benchmarks, Unigen Superposition at 4K optimized. 5060 Ti comes in about 23% higher than the 4060 Ti, which in turn was only about 6% higher than the 3060 Ti. So it's important to note also that the 4060 Ti I have here is the 8 gig VRAM version. So while that difference won't play out too dramatically here, later on we will see cer certain game instances where the 4060 Ti result uh, will be VRAM limited. 
times by extreme 18 percent over the 4060 ti we do still trail the 4070 which is about 14 percent better than the 5060 ti here and finally for port royal 25 percent bump over 4060 ti for this benchmark only a tiny bit behind the 4070. For rendering with Blender, the 5070 is about 46% stronger than the 5060 Ti, so that's a pretty big difference there. Getting into our 1440p gaming benchmarks, the test system I'm using is in the NKSM2 on the ASUS X870-i board with the 9800X 3D. Starting with Cyberpunk 2077, you'll notice that the 5070 delivers 35% higher averages here. The 5060 Ti is much stronger than I would expect versus the 4060 Ti 8G like 38%. So part of that is going to be due to the VRAM limitation. Simply put, Cyberpunk is one of those titles where the 8 gig GPUs hit a VRAM limit. It was completely utilized at 8 gigs, and that's a very good reason to go for the 16 gig version of the 5060 Ti, since otherwise you won't be able to take full advantage of it. With RT on and no frame gen or upscaling, you're not going to get much playability, but this does give you an idea of what we're working up from before you get into, you know, MFG or multi-frame gen. Ideally, you don't want to be working up from a measly 19 FPS. So, uh, you know, at least in this scenario, you really do have to drop settings down to get a little bit higher and then work up from there because otherwise the input environment will just feel really, really uh, wonky. Um, but since this is a 5000 series, you do get DLSS 4 plus multi-frame gen with the upscaling plus 2x frame gen. That's kind of the, the, the lower level. You can go 3x or 4x. Uh, but 2x, you can start to, to get a playable frame rate for RT enabled. Uh, you do have to be really cautious though, because not all users will like or react the same way to the input lag when you're starting off with a lower native frame rate like I've showed you here. As mentioned earlier, the 5060 Ti draws down 20 watts more than the 4060 Ti. So I normalized the power on the 5060 Ti, 260 watts. Interestingly, with 20 watts less power, I still got 97.5% of the average FPS. So if you are looking for better efficiency, even with the stock VF curve, this is a quick win, and I do expect this to undervolt well as also. Uh, Red Dead 2 is 14% over the 4060 Ti. It's about 34% behind the 5070. If you want to compare against 9070 in this channel, it is a pretty huge gap. Uh, with Cyberpunk 5060 Ti versus 4060 Ti, it might not be the best comparison since 4060 Ti was at the 8 gig VRAM limit, but if we look at the scaling for Red Dead 2, where VRAM isn't an issue, 5060 Ti at 160 watts outdoes the 4060 Ti by almost the same margin. So as discussed, 5060 Ti seems to run particularly well on reduced power. So even though some of the gains over 4060 Ti are coming from the additional power, on a purely apples to apples power basis here, the gap is about 13%. MSFS, 16% over the 4060 Ti. Black Myth Wukong. This is a really challenging title, so you do need to drop settings here. Without RT, it's about 25% over the 4060 Ti. With RT on, it's not going to be playable. Uh, with frame gen on, you are able to get into the 30s, 35 here. But if, if you want to play this title at 1440p with RT on at slightly higher settings, then I really would start at the 5070 Ti the level of card. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, similar scaling over the 4060 Ti. The 5070 is about 40% better here. Assassin's Creed Mirage, 19% over the 4060 Ti. This is going to be a title where the 9070 and the 9070 XT do quite well. Comparing vanilla 9070 to 5060 Ti, it's about a 50% gap. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, similar scaling here. AoE Force Modern RTS title, it's about 12% over the 4060 Ti and does trail the 4070 by about 13% here. So when we look at the results as a whole, the 5060 Ti finishes about 25% worse than the 5070, it's 9% behind the 4070, it comes in roughly 20% more on the averages versus the 4060 Ti. Again, keeping in mind, some of that is going to be 16G versus 8G VRAMs, 41% uh, here over the 3060 Ti. So case in point, just looking at the 4060 Ti versus 3060 Ti with Monster Hunters Wilds, which is terribly optimized, uh, very VRAM hungry. Normally we would expect some change for 4060 Ti versus 3060 Ti, but you don't. In fact, it's a bit worse just due to the run to run variation. But this is just an example, right? When that VRAM is all being used, that is it. Uh, and while I don't have the eight gig version of the 5060 Ti to test with, 
I would expect a similar performance here. Um, in this type of scenario, you wouldn't be getting your money's worth out of the new GPU if you went uh, with the 5060 Ti 8 gig. So the easiest first recommendation I can make here is unless you absolutely know that you are never ever going to get close to utilizing the eight gigs of VRAM, that $50 difference is well worth it for the 16 gig model. Uh, in fact, by pricing it that close, I wonder if Nvidia even wants to sell the eight gig model, but uh, long story short, eight gigs in 2025 is not enough for mid-range GPU. It's not enough you wanna, if you wanna play at uh, 1440p consistently, not enough if you play titles like this or things like Cyberpunk. Even if you don't think you will exceed eight gigs, you still have to keep in mind, you can't go back and add it two years down the road, right? So while the topic of future proofing doesn't interest me and doesn't entertain me uh, when it comes to DIY PC, I think with the minimal savings that we are talking about here, this one is kind of a no-brainer, right? Next, while the 5070Ti is very close to the 5080, the same simply can't be said about the 5060Ti versus 5070. So just looking at MSRP, because we don't have really any other point of price comparison, we are talking 550 for 5070 versus 430 for 5060Ti uh, 16G. So it's only 120 for a lot more performance, like 30% you know, or more. But the odd thing is with 5070, there isn't a 16 gig version. So while if you can avoid the 12 gig VRAM limit there, the 5070 is gonna be much stronger than the 5060Ti. Even with a 90, 192-bit bus on the 5070, there's gonna be scenarios where the extra four gigs of VRAM will be clutch. Because when you run out of VRAM, you run out of VRAM. So I would say if you're looking to stretch the budget, I would still be looking at RX 9070 there because that is a 16 gig VRAM card. Because it ran so well with reduced power, I knew right away you could push the clocks a good amount without lifting the power limit. Now this particular card, sample of one here, actually overclocked fairly well. Without increasing power limits, I push it up an additional 350 megahertz, uh, almost a 7% gain in superposition. Pushing up the power limits 10%, it could go up to 400, uh, plus 400 megahertz, uh, around 8.5% overstock. Um, since the overclocking with more power did not scale particularly well, i.e. it needed 18 watts for that final 50 megahertz of boost, I just left it at the stock power. And with the plus 350 megahertz clock boost, I saw about a 6% bump on the averages in Cyberpunk. Uh, so it's not bad without needing any additional power. So while I think users in this bracket will be less interested in tweaking the card, overclocking it, whatever, I just know that I would expect there to actually be a decent amount of, uh, let's call it free performance here. Uh, specific to ASUS's Prime implementation here, on the outside, it looks similar to the uh, cooler on the 5080 or 5070. Uh, what have you. You have three fans like those, but the heatsink is actually different because due to the lower power target with 5060 Ti, you don't need as many heat pipes. So this one only has three heat pipes and that is completely sufficient because we are talking about 178 watts in practice. The fan settled in at about 1550 RPM and that worked out to be about 62 degrees at a 50, uh, 25 degree ambient. So that's very manageable. One benefit of the lower power combined with the bigger cooler like this is noise. If you can keep fans at around the 50% mark that it's settled into in my testing, then it really will not add much noise to your setup. You have a nice long cooler because the PCB is so short. A big portion of that is this flow through section. Uh, two and a half slots thick, uh, but this dimension of cooler can still fit quite well within uh, sub 10 liter cases like the Fractal Term. Uh, the Prime is gonna be your more base level model, but the, but the cooling here is completely sufficient. And for 5060 Ti or you know, 5060, I really don't see too much of a reason to go higher than this type of cooler because anything more fancy really just gets you, you know, some uh, fancy lighting or perhaps a higher GPU boost out of the box. You still get a PQ mode, which is a dual VBIO switch with a different fan curve and you get a solid metal backplate and a helpful LED light if your power plug isn't properly connected. So this card is, is quite decent. If you look at the PCB, the 5060 Ti is actually smaller than the 3060 Ti. So in theory, we could get 
should be able to get cards that are smaller than, you know, one of my favorite cards here of all time, the 3060 Ti XC. And this can be super helpful with some really small builds. I uh, won't see it from EVGA, uh, of course, but I'm wondering if we'll see the ASUS Dual uh, for the 5060 Ti. So, all right, recommendation is mentioned. I do not and would not recommend considering the 8 gig version, but generally speaking for 5060 Ti, like other GPU launches that I've been covering, most of the purchasing decision is gonna come down to whether or not you can get it at close to MSRP. Uh, frankly, I have no idea what retailers will be pricing this one at. If I had to guess though, using Micro Center as a gauge, the 5070 Prime OC came in, is coming in about 27% higher than the MSRP. So perhaps a more realistic expectation, what have you, for the on-shelf price might be close to 550 for this particular card. Now that price, it's not great, but if you are building or upgrading into this current market, it's it's not like you have plenty of alternatives, right? At least on paper, the 16 gig 4060 Ti was $70 more than the 5060 Ti 16 gig. So even with more meager Gen over Jane gains, at least you might be able to argue that it's priced with somewhat good intentions, but uh, some of us know uh, the, the, where the road paved with good intentions leads, right? If it ends up being priced close to that 550 mark, then I would need to do some soul searching here. Um, on one hand, it is an okay entry point into a 16 gig VRAM card. At the same time, perhaps you could get the vanilla 9070 for not much more. Um, but there have been some cards floating around at the MSRP. So if you can find the 9070, I still would wholeheartedly recommend going that route versus paying for an inflated uh, over MSRP 5060 Ti. I am hopeful for some 9060 Radeon competition in this uh, bracket, although I can't speculate just yet. Perhaps even wait and see if there's going to be a 9060, 9060 XT. I'm confident that AMD can deliver on that front, but in the absence of any better options. I don't think the 5060 Ti is that uh, terrible uh, a buy. At the 4060 Ti inception with 16 gigs was an MSRP of 500, right? So different world today. So in that perspective, it's not uh, perhaps that terrible. 5060 Ti versus 4060 Ti is similar to 4060 Ti versus 3060 Ti gains. It really depends on what the other alternatives you might have at this point. Um, if you are able to get by with your current card, perhaps wait this one out. So that'll do it for this review. I will aim to check out the 5060 uh, when it launches. So hopefully uh, we'll see that soon. Hope you enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If so please give a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you are subscribed. And I'll leave links down below as cards become available. And uh, big thanks for watching today and good luck.